Season's greetings. Let's figure out the derivative of secant. If you're taking calculus, you gotta know these trig derivatives, so it's good to see where they come from. Plus, if you forget the derivative on a test, you could go through this quick chain rule to figure it out. How are we going to find the derivative of secant using the chain rule? Well, what is secant? By definition, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So the derivative of secant is the same as the derivative of one over cosine, just like that. Again, secant is this. So no funny business going on so far. Now, since I've got one divided by cosine, I could take this derivative using the quotient rule, but the quotient rule can be kind of unwieldy. I would rather use the chain rule. You could go ahead and finish this with the quotient rule for practice, but let's do it a different way. What is one over cosine x? What's another way I can write that as a composite function? Just like this. This is the same as the derivative of cosine to the power of negative one, because one over cosine is the same as cosine to the power of negative one. So now I've got the cosine function in this reciprocal function. That means we can go ahead and use a chain rule to finish this problem off. All right, first, we'll take the derivative of the outside function, the thing to a power of negative one. In order to do that, we just use the power rule. So bring the negative one down as a factor, and then we need to reduce this power by one. So when we take the derivative of the outside function, we get negative cosine of x, because we don't change the inside function when we're doing the chain rule, and then this is to the power of negative two, because I reduced that exponent by one. But remember, we are doing the chain rule, so now I've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of cosine, you may recall, is negative sine. And so this is my derivative. All that remains is a little bit of simplification. Why don't you try and do some simplification yourself before watching me go through it? All right, let's finish it off. We've got two negative factors, so those negatives are gonna cancel out. We don't have to worry about any negative signs anymore. Now, what is cosine to the power of negative two? Well, that would be one over cosine squared, and I'm gonna write cosine squared just like that. Of course, we still have our factor of sine x over here. All right, now let me rewrite this. Let's separate the two factors of cosine. So I'm gonna write this as sine of x over cosine of x, but remember we still have a factor of cosine x in the denominator. So then we'll just multiply this by that one over cosine x. Now, what is this equal to? We've separated the factors into some trigonometric functions you should recognize. Sine over cosine is tangent. So I've got tangent of x and then one over cosine. By definition, like we said here at the start, one over cosine is secant. So this is tangent of x times secant of x. And that is the derivative of secant. For some reason though, I prefer to write this in the other order, so I'm just gonna finish it off by rewriting it as secant x times tangent. Of course, the order of multiplication doesn't matter. It's kind of up to personal taste. So that's how you take the derivative of secant using the chain rule. You end up with secant times tangent. Again, you could go ahead and try finishing this problem with the quotient rule. If you're curious about that, you'll get the same thing if you do it right.